name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I have really one simple goal today, and that is to encourage you to pray. Uh, so if somewhere you get lost in the weeds of uh, my message here today, just take away that my point is that I want to encourage you to pray. I was listening to somebody talk, uh, uh, somebody recently, and they said that they didn't pray, and I thought, it's very sad not to pray. But they went on to say, but I talked to God. I just talked to him. I'm like, well, that's what prayer is. <laughs> I mean, you know, there are ways to pray more formally, but that's really what it is. You're praying. You may not call it praying, but, but that's what praying is. It's talking to God. They know how to pray. Uh, it may be a little more informal than some of us do, but they know how to pray. Uh, there are different kinds of prayer. We have formal and informal prayer. We have private prayer and, and group prayer. We pray about different things. I, I encourage you this morning when I got here to give thanks with me. There are so many things we give thanks for. The whole service is a, is a service of thanksgiving. But when we pray, we give thanks to God. It's a wicked and ungrateful person who doesn't return thanks for all God's benefits to them. We pray to praise him uh, for all the things he's done. We pray to unload our burdens, right? And we also pray to ask God for things, and that's what I want to talk about today, asking God for things. I had uh, a pretty humbling experience uh, when I uh, flew to London a couple weeks ago. I got in at about a little after 10 a.m. and got to the hotel, and my room wasn't ready for me. And so I was just so exhausted. I, I went and did get a bite to eat, but then I went back to the lobby. The room still wasn't ready. And I just fell asleep there and started snoring right there in the lobby. Because I'd been on the red eye and, and just was completely exhausted. Finally, they, uh, the, my room is ready. They would have let me go to my room earlier, but it just wasn't ready. And I go to my room and I uh, can't figure out how to get the lights on and struggled. I mean, I'm looking all over the place, you know, do I got to hold my mouth right? Or what does it take to get the lights on in this place? And I couldn't figure out how to get the lights on. The, uh, there was some light coming in the, the window, and so I said, well, I'm going to get some of this travel grime off of me. And when I fly, and you know, it's been a long time since I was able to bathe, I was more than happy to get a bath, and I go to the shower, and there's four different knobs in the shower and two buttons. So there's four knobs and two buttons. And I'm trying to figure it out. I cannot figure it out. And I managed to get water to come out of the little hand wand. I couldn't figure out how to get it to come out of the top. So um, anyway, that, that was not working. Then, of course, I wanted to use their coffee machine and they had a very fancy coffee machine there. And I did find there were like little pods. These are smaller pods than we're used to, smaller pods. Tried to get the coffee machine to work, couldn't get coffee. So I feel like I'm not just in another country, but in some alternate dimension where just everything is absolutely different and, and unworkable. But I was smart. I asked for help. <laughs> my archdeacon was just down the hall and he came and showed me how to work the lights and the shower and the coffee maker. He had stayed in the hotel uh, like a week earlier, so he was a little more familiar with the place. But I asked and so I was helped out. I was able to have my lights uh, on, get the shower working, and get a cup of coffee. Uh, Jesus says, ask and ye shall receive, right? I had a sales manager. When I was a very young man, my sales manager was, his, he kind of he kind of looked like the Rusty Jones character. He had reddish hair and, and never saw him. He didn't have a cigarette hanging out of the corner of his mouth. But, but uh, he, he told me, if you don't ask, you don't get. <laughs> and those are very wise words. If you don't ask, you don't get. Jesus says, ask and you shall receive. And so I want to talk about prayer today a little bit. Today's Rogation Sunday, and between now and Thursday, we're to ask. Uh, the church has sort of celebrated these days for some 1,500 years. It's been very tied, you know, we're, we're sort of the 
first generations of people who aren't really so tied to the land. Some of us can remember, you know, uh, I was just going through some stuff on my father's and he was right he was writing about how when he was a boy he led the horse for his father to pull the plow okay some of us can remember back to when our society was more agrarian uh, but uh, with an agrarian society uh, people understood the link between eating this year and not eating this year was the weather and whether God would bless the crops and so this time of year they would pray that God would bless them and bless their endeavors uh, for the growing season. The technology is advanced and so few of us are engaged in that, but we have all have needs to pray about, don't we? Maybe we don't, uh, you know, maybe we don't grow tobacco anymore around here like we used to anyway, but we all have businesses that we're engaged in or our families engaged in uh, uh, that we can pray about, whether it's uh, a dental office, office or a pharmacy or whatever it is that we're engaged in, whether it's a t-shirt shop or, or an ice cream stand or whatever it is, we all have things that we can pray about regarding our income. We have things we can pray about our family. How many of us, every single member in your family is a Christian? There's a few. I can't say that. We should be praying for our family, shouldn't we? Uh, I, you know, God will answer prayers. This is a little getting a little out of turn, but I know a woman. Uh, she was married to a Korean War veteran, and uh, every year for decades, she came to the church to pray for her husband every morning before she went to work for his salvation. That's prayer. You know what? Her prayer was answered after many, many years. I'm praying. But we all have things to pray about, whether it's our family, our job, our grandchildren. I had, uh, this is going back uh, six generations, but I had a great great grandmother who she prayed for all her descendants to the fourth generation every day. Uh, that's impressive. And unfortunately, I'm a little beyond that, so I, I wasn't the beneficiary of those prayers. Uh, but we can do that, can't we? Uh, pray for our descendants. There are many things we should be praying about. Jesus says uh, in John 16 here, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask, and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. Jesus is in the upper room with his disciples here. And uh, this is this uh, part of this ton of instruction he gives to them right before he goes to the cross. You can think uh, he wanted to pour into them so much at this time. And uh, we call this, this information Jesus gives his upper room discourse. And he also tells them, uh, so we're getting ready to uh, celebrate Pentecost here very soon, the descent of the Holy Spirit. He says, I won't leave you alone. I'm going to send you the helper, the Holy Spirit, uh, to guide you. Uh, where Jesus says, verily, verily, here, here he's been, this means truly, truly, or amen, amen. And this is the seventh time Jesus has said this during the upper room of discourse. He tells them some important things. He says, pray in the name of the Father, or pray to the Father. So that's a good piece of information for us, right? When we pray, let's pray to the Father. Let's pray in Jesus' name. Uh, let's ask in the name of Jesus. And Jesus says, I will give it to you. But to, to ask in Jesus' name is not just to throw that word out there like it's some sort of magic charm. It means uh, uh, our request would be something that is conducive with who Jesus is and his person. So uh, asking him to you know, help me rob this bank <laughs> is not something that you can ask in Jesus' name because that would be something completely contrary to Jesus, uh, his person, wouldn't it? So it needs to be something... Uh, that uh, we could ask in his name properly. And he says, I will give it to you. James' version of the, if you don't ask, you don't get, is, you had not because you asked not. Right? Jesus said, ask and you'll receive. James says, you don't have it because you're not asking. We're supposed to be asking God for things. And this season we've set aside to do that. What are your spiritual needs? Do you have spiritual needs? I assure you, you have spiritual needs. Because we're always, is there anybody here who's perfect? No, no, we're working out our salvation. We're working out our sanctification. We're 
hopefully progressing towards that. But all of us have spiritual needs because none of us here is perfect yet. Some of us are less perfect than others. But none of us are perfect yet. You show me someone who says they're perfect, and I'll show you someone who doesn't know what sin is. That's a fact. <clears throat> so we all have spiritual needs. What are our physical needs? Is there anybody here who has any health ailments? Uh, I think most of us could probably. Maybe, maybe, the, maybe the young man there doesn't have any kind of health issues. <laughs> the, the older you get, it's like a collection. You just keep collecting little health ailments. Uh, but physical needs. What physical needs do you have? Ask God for healing. What about your finances? Do you have more money than you know what to do with? If you don't, you need to ask God to direct your income and your spending. What about your family? Is your family the picture of spiritual health, or do you have needs with your family, physical, spiritual, financial? What about your, your family, their education needs? What about marriage? How's their marriage doing? There are all kinds of things we can be praying about, aren't there? What about the church? Are you praying for this church? Are you praying? Are you praying for me? Are you praying for Father Carr? I'm going to tell you, don't ever criticize your preacher or your priest if you're not praying for them. You don't have the right. You should be praying for them at least twice as much as you criticize them. Are you praying for your church? Are you praying for it to grow? We, we set aside our time to pray for church growth every week here, but we need to be doing that ourselves too, asking God to, to help us. And, you know, shepherds don't beget sheep. Sheep beget sheep. And the numbers prove that. If you look at how people show up at church, they don't show up at church. And you know, something like 80% of the time is because one of the church members in the pew invited them to come to church. So you should be asking God, who is it that I can run into? Who is it that I run into every day that I can invite to church? Is it my neighbor? Is it the person I see at Food Lion? Uh, is it the person that goes to the cigar shop with me? Right? Who can I invite to church? You should be inviting people to church uh, to grow the church. Lord, show me someone that I can invite to church with me. What about our community? Myrtle Beach has a lot of serious problems, doesn't it? There's a lot of drug problems. There's a lot of violent crime in Myrtle Beach. There's uh, human trafficking here in Myrtle Beach. Uh, it's, sometimes it's easy to put the blinders on, but it's here. Are you praying for your community? Are you praying for our nation? Our nation is in a terrible mess. We're a terrible influence in the world. Uh, the United States, uh, you know, we can give thanks for things like our Navy that protect trade on the seas and things like that, but morally we're being a bad influence around the world, strong-arming countries into adopting immoral policies uh, by using things like money, aid, the World Bank, the Monetary Fund. <clears throat> so we have all these things to ask about. Jesus says, ask and you shall receive. We're not just supposed to ask one time either. Well, I told you about the woman who, who prayed for her husband for decades. We're not just supposed to ask one time. We're to pray without ceasing. In the words Jesus uses here, um, uh, where it says, ask, ask, and you shall receive. The idea in the Greek there is continuously. Ask continuously, and you shall receive. Uh, in verse 24, it says, up until now, Jesus says, you ask nothing in my name. Keep on asking, and I promise you, you will keep on receiving as long as you keep asking. So that's the idea of it. In 1 Thessalonians 5.16, the apostle teaches that we should rejoice always and pray without ceasing. How, how often should we pray? We should always be praying. Never stop praying. Be persistent in prayer. Ask and keep asking. Pray continuously. Pray with persistence. And pray that you may have joy. That's another aspect of prayer Jesus talks about here. Ask continuously and ye shall receive that your joy may be full. That's interesting. It, it, Jesus inserts joy into this conversation of prayer because maybe that's not the first thing we think of. 
But the opposite of being prayerful is not just not being prayerful, it's being fearful. It's being fearful. I heard a song on the way to the church here this morning, and the lyrics were, if you have time to worry, you have time to pray. If you have time to worry, you have time to pray. The opposite of being prayerful is being fearful. So don't be fearful. Go to the Lord and pray. I uh, I got my dog a toy uh, this past week. It arrived. I think I got it a week and a half ago, maybe two weeks ago, but it arrived this week, and I got it. I was so excited. And what it is is it's a it's a dog dish, um, but it's got wheels on the bottom of it, and if you push it, food will pop up out of it, and the dog gets its food. <laughs> so I was very excited, and I, I got it out, and I put it all together, and everything like that, and I showed him how it works. This is how it goes, son. And he just looks at me, and I'm like, <laughs> Yesterday morning, I thought, well, we'll go another round trying to educate him on how this thing works, because he's hungry. He just woke up. He's going to want food. I'm like, here goes, son. And I push it, and the food pops out, and he just looks at me again. <laughs> You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink, right? <laughs> Folks, ask and you shall receive. You have not because you ask not. I've told you how to, to meet these needs that you have. You have all these needs. You have family needs. You have health needs. You have spiritual needs. Your church needs you. Your community needs you. They all need you to be praying. Ask and you shall receive. Our Lord would bless us and make us a blessing to others, but we have not because we ask not. It's time to stop doing those things. That, um, it's time to stop doing without those things that God wants to bless us with. And pray and pray without ceasing. Amen. Amen. Amen.